How do applicants avoid triggering negative stereotypes and implicit bias when applying? Ah, okay. So uh, let me take a step back and talk a little bit about what happens in the committee room. Okay, when, great. Uh, when the client's application comes in. So I've served on national grant review panels as well as on the admissions committee and s- similar dynamics in both. So everybody wants to you know find good people and develop them and help nurture them. So there's a there's a real positive aspect to it. But there's also you know the need to select in both grants and med school applications. I was it would also be PhD applicants. You've you've been on those committees too, haven't right. you? Right. Yes, and yeah. PhDs as well. You know the uh, acceptance rate can be less than ten percent, so it's pretty brutal. So there's an aspect of admissions which is weeding people out, and uh, in medical admissions that gets weeded out. Uh, at several steps. The first step is at the invitation for an interview. And then the next key step happens when the application goes forward to the whole committee and then gets reviewed there. And in all those steps of the way, uh, there's the opportunity for bias and stereotypes. And I think an important concept as part of this is red flags, right? So what tends to happen uh, at least at the end of the line when it gets to the committee, is that if somebody doesn't want the application to move forward, they can pick up a red flag and say, look, we can't accept it because of this, right? And then the application's tubed. So a serious red flag would be, oh, a couple of DUIs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but there are, are much more subtle ones. So that's part of what I do uh, with applicants is to bring that perspective of anything that could possibly uh, be picked up as a red flag. Well, you want to phrase that differently. You want to present it differently. So I I help with that. Uh, The other aspect is that there are uh, just certain biases Uh, that different people have. And not all reviewers have it, only some have it. You know, 20 years ago, we talked about racial biases. Uh, Today, it's much more subtle. It can be, for example, engineering students, right? So I personally have loved teaching uh, engineering students in med school. They have uh, really good problem-solving minds, and I think it's uh, something that should be mined (laughs) for med school. But I have seen this both in working on committees as well as working with applicants who have engineering backgrounds that they just have a harder time of it. And I think that's because there's this perception that, oh, they're nerds, they're bad with people, you know, they're not going to be good doctors. They can't <laughs> yeah. communicate. Right. They can't communicate. And, you know, it's just not true. Uh, it's it, it's just like all biases and, and stereotypes. It's just, you know, you can think it, but it doesn't mean that it's true. And and it's, it's wrong to apply it to everybody and to just rule people out uh, for that kind of reason. So being aware that those kind of biases are out there, I think it's important to cast an application, you know, to defend against those biases. So, so let's, for, let's take your engineering example. How would you have right. an engineering client? How how would you advise that engineering client to fight the stereotype? Or right. To disprove so, the stereotype as, as it applies to him or her. Right. So it's very important that they present their people skills. And those could be like on the job, in, you know, collaborations in small groups, uh, and hopefully it's in their community service efforts and in their clinical pre-medical training that they can demonstrate that they can work effectively with people and that it's a driver for them, that it's something that's important for them. And, And so you break the stereotype and then that allows the application to... Uh, to go through and be really processed on its merits instead. So 